Okay, so Hugging Face has released a new model called Zephyr 7B Alpha. This is a model that's basically a fine tuning of the Mistral model, but it's got a few new sort of ways about the recipe that they used for the fine tuning, which I think is pretty interesting. So they started off doing supervised fine tuning with a data set called Ultra Chat. And they talk about that they originally did the full data set, but they found that actually that didn't create what they wanted in regards to the personality of the chatbot. So Zephyr 7B is the first in a series of sort of chat models, I'm guessing sort of instruct models as well, that they're trying to train. The idea with these is they're trying to make them helpful assistants. So it is very interesting that they seem to be trying out different recipes to work out what's the best recipe to make a helpful assistant for you based on what data set, what techniques, etc. It's also a very interesting project in that it's one of the first where they're actually using a sort of a reinforcement learning feedback system here so that they're actually training it with uh, direct preference optimization, which is an alternative to RLHF, and they've documented the whole thing there. So they started off with the Mistral 7B model, and they've basically taken that and done a supervised fine tuning on a data set called UltraChat. So as far as I understand, UltraChat is basically a multi-turn sort of conversational dialogue data set here. And they mentioned that they started on training on the full data set, which is about 770,000, and found that actually that gave them not a personality that they wanted. So they talk about filtering it down to 200,000 examples in here. Then they went to the DPO for this. And so this is where I think this project definitely is kind of interesting to compare to what a lot of other people are doing for alignment training, where they're purely using supervised fine tuning. And I think that a number of people, myself included, have been a little bit suspicious of how much do we actually need RLHF for these kind of things. There have been a number of signs in the past that OpenAI perhaps wasn't using RLHF when they said they were. So this is an interesting project to see, okay, how much does RLHF actually affect the model? I would have loved it if they released the SFT only fine tuning of this. So we could have compared how much the DPO and the other data set has actually affected this. But unfortunately, I think they've just released this one. Anyway, they've tested it on MT Bench, which is a multi turn benchmarking system. And they find that it actually gets better scores than the Llama 2 70 billion chat model, which is definitely very impressive. So if you jump in and have a look, you can definitely have a play with this in the browser. They've put up a hugging face chat kind of thing for this and you're able to then ask it a bunch of different things and it can do things both like code as well as just standard chatting to this let's see if we ask it okay so if i ask it a question like explain best how to find prime numbers above a trillion seems like it's giving me a, a code answer here i could also probably post in some code and ask it to explain that for, for trying this out we can see that definitely on their system, it's running very nice and very snappy in here. So if we jump into actually trying it in code ourselves, here I've basically just set up a simple notebook to go through it and have a play with it. You, you can try it out yourself. One of the interesting things is that they've trained this to use the chat ML system. And now Hugging Face themselves have actually incorporated chat templates into Transformers. So what this actually does is it allows you to basically use the same chat ML template that you would use with, say, OpenAI to run it through a hung face tokenizer. If we come in and look at, at their code here, we can take the same format that we would send to OpenAI. And now we can actually run that through the tokenizer. We can just apply the chat template in here. And this will basically go through the whole thing and set that up for doing our prediction out. And you'll see that what we're actually getting back from that prompt is it's formatted it. So you've seen probably a lot of my other notebooks where I have to do the formatting manually or put it into a function, et cetera, to do this. This is now sort of baked into the Hugging Face Transformers, which is nice to see. All right, so I still set up a function for doing this where we can pass in both the input text, system prompt, max length for this. And we're going to filter out what we passed in as the query. And you can see, sure enough, we're able to do our code generation examples, just like before, instructor answering examples, like before. 
It does seem to have the base strength of the Mistral 7B in there, but definitely a different sort of personality and style, say, compared to the Mistral Orca model. Even though some of the answers are actually very similar. If you look at the answer from the Mistral Orca for this, it was also sort of classifying these things by size, origin, hair, that kind of thing as we go through it. If we look at the writing the emails thing, again, we're still getting that kind of structured first, second, third approach that we got with Mr. Orca. And I was wondering if that was coming from the Orca data set, but it seems like maybe that was actually coming from the Mistral base model uh, as well as the Orca data set. In some examples like this, where you're asking it to take on a personality, I'm not sure if it's in some ways, I think I like the Mistral Orca one a bit better for this sort of thing. Although you can clearly see that it has taken on the personality and written the email out like that. The, the email from the vice president, here we can see, this is actually written quite nicely, talking about the different reasons for open sourcing. So we can see that definitely this model responds well to the system prompt, just like the Mr. Orca one was doing as well in here. If we look at some of the things like the question about Jeffrey Hinton and George Washington, we get the answer out, we're probably not getting as much reasoning step by step. So that's where maybe the Orca data set actually does help for that kind of thing, where it really sort of broke it down. It's thinking down here. For the creative writing thing, okay, this is probably not what it was actually meant to create in here. And then finally, looking at the GSM 8K questions, it does a reasonably good job here of being able to break these down into the step-by-step -step format, very similar to Mr. Orca here. Here, it seems to have run out of tokens from that. One of the runs I ran before, it was able to work out that there were nine apples left. We can see in this one, it works out that she could should only get paid $10 for 50 minutes. It still doesn't seem to get this final GSM 8K uh, question here. And I give it like this, and I also broke it down to be a little bit simpler and give it like that. It also didn't do a great job. Anyway, I do think this is definitely an interesting model if you want to do multi-turn chat. So if there's something in there, the, the challenge you're going to have though, is you probably want to give it your particular personality. So you want to try it out with injecting a personality and see, okay, how consistently can it use that? And then like, how much can we inject into the system prompt to try this out? It does seem like this is going to be an interesting model for playing around with things like RAG, things like Langchain tools, et cetera. Maybe I'll have a play with that. And if, it, if I do find anything interesting, I'll make a new video about that. You can actually have a play with it yourself. Anyway, check it out. See what you think. I will put the link to their version that you can try as well as the code in here. It's interesting that this is just the first of a series. So we might be able to see different sorts of training formats and different sort of recipes for training these models to see what comes out. It would be really great to be able to compare different models at different times to get a sense of how much do certain things help and how much is it just the well-curated data set for doing the SFT in this. Anyway, as always, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.